like I've learned a level of trust that if something is coming up, it's for a reason. It wouldn't be in front of me if it wasn't for me. So just say yes and trust that whatever needs to be said or whatever I'm supposed to connect with will happen. That's Jennifer Cornbley, and this is the Pure Joy Podcast. Welcome. I'm Elena Love, and today we're talking to Jennifer Cornbleat. We're going to be talking about business that gives you passion and joy. And I've known Jenny for quite a long time. She's actually been a raw food friend of mine, and we met uh, years ago at Living Light. And she's a coach, and she's a healthy food cooking teacher. She's an author. And her book, uh, which I've I have is called raw food made easy for one or two people. It's awesome. And it's actually sold over 150,000 copies. I think I'm not positive, but you can tell me, Jenny, I think it's the best selling raw food book. Is that correct? Yeah, it certainly was at one point. Yeah. That's so awesome. Well, it's great to have you on the show. And um, I know that you also have a mentorship program. It's called the tasty life teacher training And each year through this program, you coach a group of cooking teachers in the making about how to find their unique vision and turn it into a fulfilling, successful business, which I love. I love that about you because I know that you're so good at helping people. Yeah, well, I love doing it. I really do. And I mean, I I love food. I also love helping people find their passion and bring it out into the world in a way that's unique to them. And um, that's something that I started doing many years ago. And it's just so fulfilling to help people find their passions and their gifts and bring it into something that really helps make a difference in the world. I agree. I meet so many people in, you know, in my culinary training or just in my line of work with helping people. And so many of them have have expressed a a passion to me or an interest in like, I want to quit my regular job. I would love to be able to do what I really love. And I really think it's possible because I know that you did that as well. When I first met you, you were teaching school. You had come to Living Light where I was teaching, where I was one of the raw food instructors. And you said, can you really do this full time like as a job? And I said, yeah. And then from there, it wasn't much longer until you were able to quit your teaching job, right? I mean, your school teacher job. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I had a lot of self-doubt when I started. Like like you said, I was a high school English teacher. And I just, I got this idea in my head that I wanted to teach about raw food because I was personally really into it. And, and this was way back before anyone really knew about it. I mean, you started at the same time. And remember that time when it was like a totally new, different thing, you know? Oh, <laughs> like yeah. Like raw foods ago. <laughs> were so unique back then. Our classes would just be packed because we were a few of the only people teaching raw foods. I know, I know. And, and people didn't necessarily think I'd succeed. I remember my parents were like, that sounds a little crazy, you know, and I didn't know how it was going to happen, you know, and and so it really, it's like I had to get through that self doubt and the doubt of a few other people, but really just by taking one step after another, you know, if you have a passion and you just keep taking the steps, it really does happen. It really does. And what do you think that is behind that? Because I know like having a passion, do you think there was a certain mindset that you had? Do you think you were more ambitious than other people? Do you like just, I'm just wondering, because a lot of people will say, oh yeah, sure you did it, but how does that mean I can do it? I don't know about you, but I never really resonated with like the nine to five thing. You know, like I, I tried having different jobs and everything, but something about it just didn't really resonate with um, my personality or, or what I wanted to do. And I knew I was really creative, but I just like didn't know how to channel that. Um, uh, but, you know, then I discovered, you know, that I loved creating recipes and I just decided I wanted to go for something, even though it didn't make sense, because I was really looking at, you know, what's the alternative? I can stay in jobs that are okay or whatever, but they're not really my passion, or I can take a risk and give it a try. And, and really what's the worst thing that can happen? You know, maybe I'll go back to having a job or something, but why not, you know, give it a try like that? and and just keep taking one step in front of the other. And I think one thing that also really helped me is, you know, partnering with people, meeting people like you, you know, even if we weren't in an official partnership, you know, just, just meeting people who are doing similar things and being really inspired by that and knowing that like it's possible to do it because other people are doing it. I think that is honestly what made the biggest difference for me. I think you're right about that. When you see other people succeeding at it and doing it and that are passionate about it. And You know, I think a lot of it can be timing too. Like when we started in this, it was, you know, with raw foods, it was 
lesser known, but I think, I think, well, it could be timing, but it's also just passion. Like you said, it's, it's gotta be this combination of things, but I think you're right. It's worth it to just take a chance because I've even pivoted and I know you've pivoted your business as well. So it's not even that we're doing the exact same thing and we've still been able to find new, you know, new, new ways to do things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, um, and I think in terms of timing, like what you're saying, like, if someone, if you have a unique idea, like someone listening in your audience, if you have a unique idea, it's like that, that gift and that passion was put in you for a reason, like it's there for a reason. And sometimes what it's really a matter of is figuring out how to really like land that message, you know, with, with people who need it, sort of like that intersection of what you're really excited about and something that people really need. And I feel like there's always an intersection to find between those two things. You may have to get a little creative with it, but there's always a way to intersect those two things. Yeah, I totally agree. And that's what I keep finding over and over again through like people that are coming to my courses and taking my love camp, my one month training is that when they're, when they come, they have one idea in mind, like I really just want to get healthy or I want to lose weight. But then when you start helping them shift their perception of how they're doing other things, bringing in new modalities and new ways for them to do things, suddenly it like opens their minds up to a whole new way of looking at the world and new way of doing things. And that's really what I love seeing is like that people can go, wow, I thought I was just coming for the food or I thought I was just coming for this one thing, but I found that everything's completely different. And now I can see that there's a possibility. Something shifts where you just look at one thing differently and your home mind opens around your world and your life. Totally, totally. And I love like how the name of, of your business for so long, you know, has been Pure Joy and Pure Joy Planet because like that doesn't necessarily immediately have to do with food, you know, but but it's like that really is the essence of who you are and what you're sharing. And it's like food is is one window into that whole world of what it what it is to be joyful. Exactly. It's just one gateway. And there's so many. And I know like, so what I wanted to ask you today is I have a few questions I'd like to ask you. And the first one is what is your definition of joy? Joy is when I feel so present and content in the present moment. And what I love about it is it's not dependent on anything external. It's like, I don't have to have anything go my way, you know, to feel joyful, which is a relief because a lot of times things don't go my way. So, so what, what I love about, you know, joy is it's always available. And sometimes it'll just be when I'm even in a moment of stress or something, I can close my eyes, take a deep breath and feel that presence, you know, and, and be filled with a feeling of peace and appreciation of what is. So that's really my definition of this, this, this presence, this being, this feeling that is always available in any moment that doesn't depend on anything external. Yes. I love that. I love that definition. That's so true. It's just about this. I, that's how I explained it when I talked about why I named my business Pure Joy. It was just this random moment and this joy just flooded through my body. And I was like, wow, like eating healthier makes me feel more joyful. And that was like what I thought. But then I realized there's so many ways to have that experience. So I love that you defined it that way. One thing I've noticed too, it's like, I mean, the connection between food and joy, it's like, it's not necessarily cause and effect for me in the in the sense that, you know, I could be eating perfectly or somebody else could, and it doesn't mean you're going to feel joy, you know, vice versa. Even if I'm not eating perfectly, I could totally feel joy at every moment. I do feel like certain practices, whether it's food or movement or whatever, can kind of release some of the blockages so it's easier to access it. But what I love about true joy is it really is just always there and available at any moment. I think you're right about that because not only have I experienced it when I've been like on a cleanse or just juicing, the other day, it's been a while since I went to yoga and I was in a yoga class and suddenly this, that same joy that's always there, like you said, just started flooding through me again. And it's, I feel like it's always there and we just need to remember to access it or to keep health is one way to keep accessing it because our bodies have that birthright of joy of the, like always being in that place. And so like, I know that you, before you, when you were a school teacher and now you've just done so much since I met you and you've completely shifted your business into coaching now, which I love. And what do you think, like, because I do look at you as kind of an industry leader in, in a lot of these areas, what do you think has like gotten you to this place of being such an expert and like taking you to this level of just maybe being ordinary to something extraordinary? 
it's actually a, a pretty simple concept that I've practiced that I just kind of take for granted because I just do it naturally, but I see that not necessarily everybody does it. And I really think it's responsible. And that's like the willingness to say yes to all the opportunities that come up that are in alignment with my vision, like whether or not they feel scary, whether or not they're convenient, whether or not I feel ready, and just a willingness to approach any potential obstacle or resistance is a problem to be solved and, and not a reason to stop, you know? So, so like, like just for example, I had a, today, I had a couple opportunities come up really last minute, you know, like when is doing this interview with you right now, <laughs> you know, it kind of came up last minute. So thank you so much for inviting me. And the other was um, someone else asked me, um, she was sick and she had to just, you know, kind of miss out. She was teaching a live online course, but, but she was really, really sick. And she asked if I could just teach a part of it. And that came up like 15 minutes before she needed me to step in and doing that. And, and I did. And there's a time when I have, I would have felt like an interview with you, you know, last minute or, um, you know, stepping in to teach someone else's online course with 15 minutes notice, you know, it would have felt like too soon, like I need more prep time, you know, or whatever. But now I feel like I've learned a level of trust that if something is coming up, it's for a reason. It wouldn't be in front of me if it wasn't for me. So just say yes and trust that whatever needs to be said or whatever I'm supposed to connect with will happen. So it's like, it's like feeling any kind of resistance or fear and just saying yes. And then I think the other thing that I practice regularly that's really helped me is an attitude of generosity. So when I start to doubt myself or feel frustrated or wish something were different, to refocus off of myself and what I'm worried about onto helping another person. So, you know, and this happens all the time. Like earlier today, I was feeling just a little low energy and tired because I hadn't gotten quite enough sleep last night. And I had a coaching call with a woman. I just, you know, offered her this free call. I had just met her and I really just liked her and wanted to help her out. And me and Mark just had an incredible, that's my husband, we coached together, this incredible call with her um, to help her with um, some messaging around her business. She wants to do an online cooking course. And I left the call just filled with energy. I was tired before. And then you might think, well, I worked for an hour. Wouldn't I be more tired after? And it's like, no, I was actually reborn with energy because the focus had gone off of me onto someone else. So that's another thing that I practice that really, really helps me in my business. That's awesome. I, I know that feeling too. Like when you're going to teach, a, like I've done that after classes, like, you know, you teach an hour or two hour class and you're so full of energy because they're radiating all their energy to you as you're teaching them too. So it's really like a, a give and take, like this energy connection that you can get with sometimes when you're working with people, which I love. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I forget that sometimes because I'm a little bit shy and introverted. Um, and so it's like, sometimes for me, there will be just an initial, oh, okay, I'm going to be in front of a person or, you know, I might feel a little bit like, you know, I could be tired or whatever. But then once I do it and just really lose myself in that interaction, I'm filled with energy and joy. What about something that you're working on perfecting about yourself? Is there anything like that right now? Well, actually, I mean, I would say I'm kind of working on not perfecting myself <laughs> because <laughs> I'm somebody who tends to be really goal oriented and really ambitious. And what I feel like I'm learning and working on now is just how to take more time to just enjoy the ordinary moments in life, you know, whether it's a nice walk or listening to some music or, you know, appreciating a cute dog. I love walking down the street and noticing all the cute puppies spending time with Mark, my husband, and just knowing that I don't have to strive to be perfect and it's actually okay to relax and enjoy life. So I would say that's something I'm working with right now. I like that. I think a lot of more, a lot of us need to be more like that, like just being relaxing into the moment. I feel like our lives, it's funny because we haven't really talked for a while, even though we've been friends for so long. Our lives are pretty parallel right now because a lot of your aha moments are some of my <laughs> aha moments. <laughs> Like, I just need to be more like I need to stop pushing myself so hard and be more. And then when you do that, it just seems like everything else kind of falls into place. Like you said, it really does. It really does. And I think I developed somehow an idea that we have to strive and work and push to get things done. And, and in a way, it's good. I mean, I'm a hard worker, and I have a strong work ethic. And I think there are like good things to having, you know, that as a quality. But then sometimes I can forget that actually to really enter a state of flow, 
one thing I think about pushing that can block that is you're not necessarily as receptive to signs and guidance and opportunity because you're so like, for me, I'm so in my one track mind when I'm like that. But when I kind of step back and slow down, I actually see other opportunities and creative ideas that I might have been too kind of busy, you know, to, to notice before if I was too much in push mode. I totally get that. It's kind of like when you're in meditation, you're like, no, I'm going to take this 20 minutes, even though I'm busy. And then when you're in that moment, these other ideas come in of like new ways to look at this problem or project. And you're like, oh my gosh, those 20 minutes to save me an hour of time. Completely. I completely agree. And it's like things like meditation or going on vacation or taking days off, um, even though I don't do them, you know, specifically for business. I, I have to say, I really do notice that they improve everything because, um, you know, like you said, I mean, creativity, I think creative ideas really happen in spaciousness, not when you're filled with busyness as much. So it's just so important for me to make sure that I have that, you know, slow, slow downness and stillness in my life. Yeah. And I think a lot of businesses are figuring that out. Like I know Google has all these things in place for their employees to nap and meditate and play. And, you know, so I think a lot of these higher end technology businesses are, have tuned into the fact that just pushing, pushing, pushing is not the way to actually get the most out of people. Yeah, totally. I completely agree. Do you have a favorite healthy food or a favorite supplement that you feel like gives you joy or just is one of something that you couldn't live without? Yeah. Well, I, I just, I mean, it's been really the same one for years and years and years, and it really is green juice. I keep coming back to green <laughs> juice. Like I, I've gone through periods where I've gotten away from juicing just cause like I'm traveling or, you know, it takes too long or too expensive or whatever. You know, I've gone through periods where it's like, well, I don't know if I need, really need to juice, you know, I'll just do smoothies or whatever. But whenever I come back to green juice, it's like, I just feel so much more life force in my body and oh I just start craving it. I love it. Yeah. Exactly. Can you tell us what you put in your green juice? Because some people might not know what a green juice is. So I like my green juices really, really green, uh, you know, in the sense of like not a lot of fruit in it or whatever, just really green. That's what makes me feel the most calm and centered um, and energized. And so, um, you know, I either use a green star juicer or um, I've done different things, though, blended and strained it, even just buying it at a good quality juice bar if, if, you know, that's the most convenient thing. But when I'm making it, what I put a love in it is celery, romaine lettuce, cucumber, um, kale, and a little bit of lemon. And if I want a tiny bit of fruit, I'll put a little Granny Smith apple in it, but usually I don't. That's almost exactly the kind I do. I do parsley too, which I love. But have you noticed that it's the kale, the parsley, the dark leafy green that gives you that joy factor, that gives you that extra boost? Because I can do a celery cucumber juice and I feel good. But when I add the kale or the other really alkalizing greens, it takes me to another level. Have you noticed that? Oh, totally. And I think that's why sometimes if I buy it at a juice bar, if they're either not using those greens or just using a tiny amount of them, it doesn't have the same effect. You know, like it, it really is that dark leafy green. I, I love parsley too. Sometimes I do that or cilantro. I really like too. And kale, totally. And, or dandelion, you know, oh, if you really want to go green. Bitter. <laughs> and it does. I know. But it, it just gives me that feeling of like, calmness. It's like an energy, but it's like a very, it's like calmness as well. It's like a calm energy where you just feel like that joy. It's like, that's why, I mean, the funny thing is the reason my, my business is called pure joy is because of a green juice. Cause I was drinking a green juice, you know, 20 years ago when I started this business and I just surged with this joy. So like there is something to it. And that's my favorite thing too. That's my absolute favorite. If I only had one food and I call green juice a single food, <laughs> like that I could have for the rest of my life, it would be green juice because I know that's what makes me feel the best. Yes, yes. You're making me want one. I think I'm going to have one. I know. <laughs> I do too. My mouth's watering. I'm like, all right, when do I get my green juice? <laughs> I want to hire someone just to make me green juice. But I was going to say also, have you noticed like, so like say going to a juice bar and they use those juicers that the centrifugal that just kind of rip the produce up. Have you noticed that the quality of juice has, makes a difference in, in how you feel too? It makes a huge, huge difference. And sometimes if I don't know how they're juicing it or whatever, I can have one ju green juice one place and be like, okay, that was nice, but I don't feel much. And then I can have another one somewhere and be like, wow. So I, I'm not, you know, so that could be the way they're juicing it for sure. Yeah. And I mean, I'm just curious too, do you, I know at times you've blended and then strained. I mean, do you have a, a favorite kind of present mode of juicing that you find works the best? I do use the blending and straining, but let me tell you, 
I don't blend it very long. So what I do is like I take a head of celery and I chop it up. Then I take a, if I put in cucumber and I chop a whole cucumber, a parsley, like one half of a bunch, which is kind of like a big balled up cup or cilantro or whatever, maybe five leaves of kale. And then I'll throw the lemon juice, like I'll chop all that up, throw it all in my Vitamix blender and throw the like quarter cup or two tablespoons of lemon juice in. So I have a little liquid in there and I just gently blend it using the plunger and I stop blending before it gets fully, fully blended. Like there's still a little bit of chunks in there. And so it's literally like maybe 20 to 30 seconds and then strain it through a nut milk bag. And that juice will not separate and it will last for in my fridge staying super fresh for two days, which I find really fascinating because you would think blending it would destroy it. But I think it's a lot gentler because if you use a slow blend while you're doing it, you don't like over blend it. it it's amazing. That and then I'll use my Green Star juicer. But to honestly, I mainly use my blender because it's so quick and easy. Mm, I'm going to try that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oh, I love that we both love green juice. We'll have to have a green juice party together sometime. <laughs> Uh, is there any other other things that you do like on a regular basis that you just absolutely don't think you could live without like fitness or any any other things? I really love having a morning ritual of about 30 minutes where I meditate and I read something inspirational and just kind of sit quietly and I spend at least 20 minutes doing that um if not 30. And, and then I love also getting outside at some point during the day and just walking in fresh air. And, and it's not so much I can't live without it in the sense that I have had days where I've skipped one or the other of those things, but I know I can't live well without them. Like my best days are days when I do those things. So I really try to make it every day because it just sets the tone and energy for the rest of the day that no matter what happens, you know, like if I'm in a calm centered state, cause I've done my morning ritual, no matter what happens during the day, it almost provides the shield around me where I'm able to perceive things differently, be less reactive. It just, it just shifts the energy of the entire day. Yeah. I, I would agree with you there, especially the nature part, like something about being in nature. It's, it's, part of who we are. Like we need to keep reconnecting with even just like in a city, like you are in Chicago being out and just looking at the trees there, there's actually been studies that shown just looking at pictures of nature can calm a person down. You know, that's amazing. And, and like you said, I am in a big city, but you know, there, there's some parks here, there's trees. And yesterday I was walking with Mark and just right around the corner, there, there was a plant store, like a garden store. And we walked in there to check it out. And just being around that many plants, I felt a whole shift in the oxygen in the air. And I just, I felt like drenched in oxygen. It was amazing. Ooh, that's <laughs> a nice visual. I like that. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. So uh, now I'd like to ask you about some of your insights. Like if there's any roadblocks that you've encountered and successfully navigated. So like you mentioned, you know, my business uh, is evolving. So now what, what I do, I work in partnership with Mark, my husband, and we do help um, food entrepreneurs through our Tasty Life teacher, tra teacher training. Um, but we work together and like his background is in messaging and copywriting and helping entrepreneurs create content. And, and this is something that's like very different than where I started because where I started was in like myself teaching healthy cooking classes, raw food classes, writing a book. And I still love all of that. But like I said, I've also had this love of business and myself being an entrepreneur and, and then helping train entrepreneurs. And now kind of combining with some of my husband, Mark's gifts, we've really gone more in this direction of helping entrepreneurs with their messaging and the content of, of their most important projects, whether it's courses or programs and, and some of their copy and their marketing. And even though that's different than what I started, I find that each time I have um, a vision for something I'm excited about, I've learned to trust that that I can go for it because it's like I always have the vision before all the knowledge is there uh, on exactly how is this going to work or whatever. And I, I realized that that's okay. Like if you have a vision of something you're excited about and you put that intention out there, you will find the people and support to help you with it. And I've had so many great mentors and coaches and just supportive friends and people, you know, who've appeared to work with over the years at the exact moment that I'm thinking about a new idea. And so I think that's a way like, you know, it, it's kind of a perceived roadblock. Oh, I want to go in this whole new direction. Will I be able to do it? But part of navigating it has been trusting if there is a new vision I'm excited about in my life, there's a reason for that. And if I put that intention out there, I'll start seeing opportunities for support and learning everywhere to help me figure out the how and pursue it. 
I like that because it does feel like that. Like if you're getting this, so I love the, like the spiritual essence of it. If you're getting the idea, it means that there's a reason that you are, and it's like part of your life path or purpose. So of course, like trusting that everything will come into place. I mean, it sounds like a no brainer, but I know it's hard for a lot of people to get that mindset, but it, it makes so much sense. It's happened to me over and over again, and you don't even realize it's happening. You're like, yeah, I'm going to open a cafe. And then suddenly before I know it, it's like someone's contacting me going, oh, I have this cafe sitting here. He didn't even know that I wanted to do it. And like, like you say, you just put the idea out there without thinking, how's it going to happen? Just trusting. And it all seems to fall into place. And it's, and it's all absolutely. And it's also saying yes, because like, like you had that thought about the cafe and then when the opportunity appeared, you didn't say, oh, well, it's not the right time or I'm worried about this or that, or like you could have stopped for some other external excuse or reason, but you said yes to it because it was in alignment with your vision. And, and it's the same, like if I, cause I see this a lot where people will have an idea. It's sort of like, be careful what you wish for. You'll have an idea and the universe will place opportunities for you to have that vision everywhere, but then it's up to you to say yes to it. Well, and that's your whole thing back to your saying yes, how you say that's what you do is you say yes. And I love that because you're right. Like if you're going to ask for something and then say no, which I guess is fine too, because you can be discerning and say, well, that doesn't feel quite right. But if you're going to ask for something and keep saying, oh no, I'm scared. Oh, it's not right timing. Like that's just an excuse. And eventually I think... You know, I read a book by um, Liz Gilbert and it was called The Big Magic. And she talks about how ideas come to people or these, you know, ways to do things, but it'll knock a, quite a few times. But if you just keep saying no, then it'll just go to someone else. And I love that idea that if you say yes to it and you're open, like, oh, okay, here's an opportunity and you just go for it, that you can just trust that everything will work out. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I saw this be careful what you wish for thing recently, just in my personal life, where um, one of me and Mark's visions for this year was to create a home in Chicago, where we moved to recently, moved back to, I used to live here. And for a long time, we've been traveling kind of nomadically, like for two years, our stuff has been in storage, and we've been living in different cities around the country. And, and that's been like, totally, totally fun. But we were feeling like, I'm a little tired of the traveling and I really want to create a home. And so the opportunity came up to get this really amazing large home that we're living in now. And so, so we're here and whatever. And when we first got it, I really freaked out. And I was like, what in the world have we gotten into? Like, why did we get this house? Like, I love traveling. I just want like a tiny little crash pad that has like no responsibility. Like what? Like, you know, what are we doing? You know, I was like kind of overwhelmed by it. And then I realized, wait a minute. I actually told the universe I wanted to create a home. And so the universe was like, okay, like how about you get this amazing castle? And, you know, like it, it, it was, and so now what I see as being part of the, the larger purpose of it is now that we are in this place that actually does require more responsibility than just a little crash pad I could leave at a moment's notice. All of these opportunities have opened up around Chicago that actually require us to be here for more of a sustained period and not travel that oh, we're so excited about. But I couldn't have known that. Like if it had just been my own little plan, I never would have done that. But it's like sometimes I feel like the universe will do for us what we can't totally see and do for ourselves, you know? Yes. It's like the parent kind of. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so it's like, I know the intention of creating a home. So the universe is like, okay, you want a home? We're going to get there you one. You well, also with that big house, it's not like you can just up and leave either. It's not like, oh, well, we got this cute little house. We'll just turn, we'll flip it and move on. It's like it it's almost a way of the universe keeping you there so you can fulfill your destiny. Exactly. Exactly. So I've learned more and more to trust that I still always have those moments where I'm like, I wish something else were happening. The grass is greener. I should have done this. I should have done that. But when I, you know, kind of release my own plan and will about it and trust without exception, I'll find out a few weeks or months or even a couple years down the line. That's why it needed to play out that way. I love that. I was just talking to someone about that last night, how in the time, like you can be upset about something or you're like, oh, this doesn't feel right. Or even a relationship that you're in. And then now you look back years later for me, like I'm like looking back on an old relationship. So I'm going, oh my God, everything about it was perfect. Even though at the time it was painful, you know, so like we don't always know what's for our best and highest good, but it makes us who we're becoming. What about any, have you tried any uh, like health, crazy health hacks or trends? I know there's all the biohackers out there these days. I don't know if this is crazy, but like, I guess the most extreme would be there was a period of time when I was strictly raw. I mean, many, many years ago where I only ate raw for like almost a year. 
And actually to this day, sometimes people assume that I eat only raw because I did write raw food made easy, but I'm not, that's not true. And I've kind of evolved over, I mean, not even over the years. I mean, a long time ago, I kind of evolved away from that to eating a mixture of a lot of raw fresh foods and green juices and salads, which I love, but adding healthful cooked foods into that. And, um, and so, yeah, so I did go through a period of being a little more extreme with that as it was new and I was kind of experimenting with it, but then it, it kind of, you know, then I quickly became not as extreme about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I even remember a time when you came to me because a lot of people have asked me and I'm sure they've asked you over the years because I was 100% raw vegan for quite like five years. So the fruitarian diet, and I know at one point you had tried that or you were trying it and you came to me and you were telling me about your experience with only eating fruit. How was that for you? It's interesting because I'm remembering a couple of times that I've tried that. And and one time I was in a tropical environment like in Costa Rica and it was just for a brief period, maybe a couple weeks. And I actually felt really good, a lot of energy. But then there was another time when I did it in Chicago where I actually gained a lot of weight and didn't feel so good. So I think sometimes that stuff, it's a matter of where you are in your life, how long you're doing it for, and that kind of thing. But overall, it's it's not something that um, really worked for me to eat. It wasn't that. sustainable. Yeah. 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 That's, that was my experience too. And I have, I've tried it more than once as well. I know some people do well on it, but for me, it was just like, I just couldn't eat all that fruit. I know we talked about roadblocks already, but like anything big that you felt like was really a valuable lesson. If you've had a challenge, it's not a bad thing. It actually makes you stronger at being able to teach others and show others how to overcome that challenge the way you have. And it can help you be more empathic too with other people going through challenges. And so like if you're trying to decide, like for someone listening, you know, what is my purpose or what could I actually do or teach that gives me meaning? I really think the key is in some of the challenges that you face. So, so like going back to how I never resonated with nine to five and that never worked for me. I was actually fired from a number of jobs just because I couldn't really do nine to five. Like that was a challenge, but now it's allowed me to show other people how to leave nine to five jobs and start businesses. So taking something that like didn't work for you, but that you overcame, and that can be the key to really discovering what you can help others with. Yeah, because like I think a lot of people would judge themselves. Well, what's wrong with me that I can't work a nine to five job? You know, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And like, you know, other people could say, oh, you're a flake. And it's like, no, you took it, you took it and turned it around and made it something super way more successful than you would have been as a high school teacher and helping so many more people. And I think another thing I figured out too is around partnering. So I grew up as an only child and I had a long habit of, because of that, just doing a lot of things on my own, you know, by myself. And, um, and, and, and there were benefits to that. I had a strong work ethic and all of that. I was really creative, but I really got in a habit of, of doing things on my own. You know, I was very self-reliant and all of that, but there's a limit to that. And and then through a combination of factors, including getting married and starting to work with Mark, I really discovered, and being a part of some different mentorship communities, I really discovered that I actually like working in partnership and community. And so now I try to actually take advantage of any opportunity to do that. It kind of goes against my initial patterning. But whenever I've done it, I mean, it's just led to amazing things. And it doesn't necessarily need to mean like even an official business partnership, you know, although I have that with Mark now, but it can even mean, I mean, like, you know, connecting with you and chatting with you and doing this interview, like any opportunity to connect with others just gives me a sense of such support and not going it alone. And it's been just so helpful for me. Yeah. I like that. Like collaboration, basically, like help, we all help each other. And I feel like we are tribal and we've forgotten that, like, because I've experienced the same thing where you, like, I've had experiences where it's like, I'm the lone wolf. I'm doing everything on my own. Oh, no, I'm not going to partner with anybody. And then I've now, since then pulled in Caitlin, who's my business partner. And I've partnered with other people and brought other team members on and everything just gets better when you have the right people in your life and, and you can collaborate and rely. I mean, there's something about relying on other people that's coming back to your trust thing that you, you kind of have to trust other people, which is good because it makes you realize we're all in this together. To be able to give and then also receive is so important. What about uh, if you could wave a magic wand and change the world, what one thing do you think you would change? I would say to help people see that we're really all one you know, we're not so different. I, I think that a lot of the problems in this world, if not all of them, come from this feeling of separation, you know, from others as being different or, you know, you know, somehow other than us, not like us, from feeling separate from ourselves, feeling separate from nature. 
you know, and if we really got that we were all one and all the same, I just think so many of the the actions that we take out of fear, you know, of actually believing that we're separate when it's not even true, um, we would cease to feel the need to do that. So that's what I would change. Okay. So now we're going to take a break so I can give our listeners the tip of the week. My health tip for today is spirulina. If you haven't tried spirulina, I highly recommend trying it. It's a dark green powder that comes in a glass jar and it is super energy boosting. It also, I've noticed for me, makes my nails grow really strong and white. And it's great for eyesight. It's great for brain power. It's great for energy production. It's one of Earth's first foods. So it's been around for over 3 billion years and it grows in alkaline lakes. It can be considered a staple food for a lot of people. If you put this in your food, in your smoothies every day, you will notice a big production of energy. A lot of athletes use it on a regular basis for the, its protein content. Did you know that it's 60% protein by weight and 90% absorbable? So it really is bioavailable in your body. It has all eight essential amino acids, which makes it a complete protein. And it's a source of vitamin B1, B2, B6, vitamin E, and vitamin K. And it also has a vast array of minerals, trace elements, and phytonutrients and enzymes. So if you're looking for a brand new superfood to try, get some spirulina. I like Health Force Nutritionals brand, and I also like the Hawaiian spirulina. And now, Jenny, I want to ask you um, some lightning round questions. So if you could ask the all-knowing, all that is, God, whatever your na- name is for it, one question about life and get a definitive answer, what do you think you would ask? What is my purpose? And I'm just saying that because even though I feel like I can tune into that question, you know, all the time, and and a lot of it is the journey and all of that, I don't know. I, I just think it would be amazing to sort of just know from the source, like, like what it is so that I could not waste time in any distraction and just be fully, 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 fully engaged in that. And I think there's always a deeper level of it. Like I'll think I know part of my purpose and it's there. And then I'll find an even deeper level of what truly gives the most meaning and joy, you know? So I would ask God or the universe to just help me cut to the chase and like, what is the ultimate purpose? Let's cut to the chase. (laughs) It sounds like you, Jenny. Come on, let's just get down to business. What is it? (laughs) I love it. What are one or two things that um, maybe you could ask our audience to start doing that could help improve their life or give their lives more joy? Like maybe some homework assignments for them. I would say, you know, if it appeals to you and everyone's different. So, you know, only if this, you know, sounds appealing to you. I would try taking like 15 minutes just of stillness to just sit quietly and breathe and commune and just be, you know, with, with the universe. If, if, you know, if you believe in God, you can call it that, or you can just call it just being, you know, with the universe or just tuning within and being with yourself and, and just trying that to see what emerges over the course of a few days or of a few weeks. And, Because I know that that kind of slowdown for me has just been a game changer. It's made all the difference in my level of joy and in my ability to actually even make good decisions um, because I'm tuned in to a deeper guidance than just the busy day-to-day that we can all get so wrapped up in. So that that would be the, the number one thing. Another thing that I would say is if you're ever feeling, you know, isolated or, you know, confused about what to do or you know, anything like that to um, reach out to others. You know, one, one thing that I often do anyway for my business, because I am offering products and services and things like that is I will talk to like, you know, sometimes two or three or even more people per day, you know, not all year, but there'll be times in my business where I'm doing that. And what I've noticed is when I'm doing that, I'm actually filled with a lot of joy. And I think it's because I'm listening to people and I'm giving and I'm focusing on how I can be helpful for people. So I've tried to make a practice of even when I'm not, you know, doing anything business related or offering anything in my business to just kind of continue that of like reaching out and connecting. And it could be to old friends, like the way that we've recently, you know, reconnected. It could be to colleagues that you admire. You don't have to have a specific strategic goal oriented reason at all to just pick up the phone, connect and say, you know, I'd love to just catch up with you and find out what you're doing and what you're working on. And, and I find that that kind of like focusing out, if you're ever feeling stuck or, you know, or confused about what you want to do or isolated, it can really help shift up the energy and get you back and flow. Oh my gosh. I love that one. 
that I'm, I'm going to take that assignment on because I'm, <laughs> I'm good at reaching out sometimes, but like the reason we're talking today is because you reached out again to me, um, after we had had a couple missed opportunities and it was like, yeah, like right now is a good time to talk. That was yesterday. And you just never know when you're just going to hit someone in a perfect moment. And I think we could even take that further to say, maybe like someone you admire, like you said, like someone that you're kind of like, oh, well, they're an author, like a famous author. And I could never talk to them, like take a chance and reach out to them. Why not? What have you got to lose, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. I love all your answers, Jenny. You're just, you're so, you're so motivational and I love talking to you. You're just really fun. <laughs> you too. You too. I'm like all inspired and energized now. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we need to get together in person soon and, and totally together and come up with some new fun things. So I just want to find out if there's a great way for people to connect with you. Sure, sure. So um, my website is tastylifecoaching.com. And on that site, I've got a lot of uh, recipes, delicious recipes. There's a free gift on there, um, 10 tasty recipes in under 20 minutes. And they're all a combination. Some are just raw. Some are raw mixed with healthful cooked. A lot of um, smoothies, salads, green juices, um, easy one pot meals, you know, that kind of thing, just real quick and easy stuff. And for people who are interested in creating a business out of their love of healthy food or out of anything else, there's some information about um, our teacher training on there. And people can always email me too, just at Jenny, J E N N Y, at tastylifecoaching.com if you have any questions or if you just want to connect. Okay. Hey, I love that. Thanks. I'm sure people are going to love your recipes. Thank you so much, Jenny, for being with us. It's been really great talking to you. You've been listening to the Pure Joy Podcast, a podcast by Pure Joy Planet. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast in iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play. Join me next week for another health-inspired conversation. Together, we can build a pure joy life. And as always, I invite you to get in touch with me with any questions or topic requests. I love getting your correspondence. Have an awesome day.